Welcome, I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, ECOWAS Heads of State meet in Abuja. President Muhammadu Buhari tells gathering that democracy has come to stay in Africa. The President delayed 2016 budget at the National Assembly on Tuesday, December the 22nd, as members shelf their vacation. Court of Appeal upholds judgment sacking River State Governor Nyesom Wike. And thousands of protesters march in South Africa to demand President Jacob Zuma's sack. On business news tonight, Lagos State Government plans to improve its economic growth by attracting foreign investors into the state. And on sports news tonight, suspended FIFA Vice President Michel Platini refuses to attend FIFA ethics case hearing. The president has given the assurance that the country will remain committed to the sustenance of democracy and good governance in West Africa. He also pointed out that making the region strong and prosperous is possible only in a stable atmosphere. President Mohamed Rubhari was speaking in Abuja at the opening of the 48th session of the Economic Community of West African States and the 40th anniversary of the regional body. The president, who's hosting the event, observed that the organization may have recorded concrete achievements, but it still needs to deal with the challenges that threaten peace and security in the region. Our State House correspondent Chuku Maunekose reports. It is a summit designed to mark 40 years of the existence of the West African regional body whose main focus include the integration of the people as well as entrenchment West of African peace States, and development in West Africa. I am pleased to welcome you all. Nigeria's president says the elections in Nigeria and the recent developments in Burkina Faso are signals to the fact that democracy has come to stay in West Africa. Let me recall that the election in Burkina Faso completed the circle of 215 presidential elections in the region, successfully conducted in my country, Nigeria, Togo, Guinea, and Côte d'Ivoire. This remarkable achievement reflects our collective resolve to entrench democracy and good governance in the region. As we prepare for more general elections in the coming year, I assure your excellencies that Nigeria will remain steadfast in its commitment and support to democracy and good governance. We believe that a politically stable West Africa can only be strong and prosperous. ECOWAS may have done well in regional integration 40 years after, but there are still daunting challenges of insecurity, drug trafficking, cross-border crime, terrorism and infrastructure problems, issues the host president says must be tackled going forward. All this constitutes serious threats to peace and security in the region and therefore require our urgent and concerted actions. Many of the heads of government here were in France for the recent summit on climate change. The president says West Africa should not lose the lessons from the summit. President of Senegal and chairman of ECOWAS, Marcus Sali, and the president of ECOWAS Commission, Kadri Wadroga, commend the various efforts in peace issues, the tackling of Ebola, and the fight against terrorism. Goodwill messages came from representatives of the United Nations Secretary General and the chairman person of the African Union Commission. The opening ceremony of an event lettered for two days. Now on the second day there will be switches from representatives of the private sector, women and children in the sub-region as well as a tribute to the founding fathers of ECOWAS. Chukuma Onwekusi, Channels Television News. The Senate has disclosed that President Muhammadu Buhari will next Tuesday, December the 22nd, present a 6.07 trillion naira budget proposal to the National Assembly. The presentation has compelled the Senate to shift its earlier plan to proceed on Christmas break on Thursday to Tuesday next week. The 6 trillion naira budget proposal for 2016 is predicated on $38 per barrel oil benchmark and 197 naira exchange rate.
I hear distinguished senior president, 2016 budget presentation. I crave the kind indulgence of the National Assembly to grant me the slot of 10.00 hours on Tuesday, 22nd December 2015 to formally address a joint session of the National Assembly on the 2016 budget. While I thank the distinguished members of the Senate of the Federal Republic for your steadfast cooperation and understanding, please accept, distinguished Senate President, the assurances of my highest consultation. Yours sincerely, Mohamed Bouhari. The House of Representatives has mandated its Committee on Finance to investigate the management of Nigeria's foreign reserve accounts by the Central Bank of Nigeria and the interest that's accrued to the country from the last four years. In a motion sponsored by Honorable Abdul Samad Dasuki, the House noted that the accruals from the accounts have not been openly declared by the CBN. The committee is also to understand the criteria being applied in engaging foreign managers for the accounts. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The House also notes that the CBN maintains several foreign reserve accounts on behalf of the Federation containing funds in foreign currencies that are held in financial institutions before they are shared during the monthly Federation Accounts Allocation Committee FAC meetings. The House also aware that reasonable interest accrues from the surplus of funds held by the CBN on behalf of the Federation, which have not been monetized into Naira and received by the Federation from the CBN in the foreign bank accounts. The House concerned that the accruals to the Federation from the foreign reserve accounts have not to only have, have not to be, be op openly declared by the CBN and remains indiscernible in public records. The House also worried that if this situation is not thoroughly examined and appropriate measures taken, it may lead to unforeseeable consequences. We move over to legal matters where an FCT High Court has deferred the ruling on the application to grant bail to the former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambo Dasuki and five others facing charges of alleged diversion of funds meant for arms in the fight against terrorism to Monday, December the 21st. Counsel to the accused persons, Ahmed Raji, said the offences for which they are to be tried are bailable and the accused persons are presumed innocent. They are therefore entitled to bail at the discretion of the court. But the prosecution, Rutimi Jacobs, objected to the bail application on the grounds that the accused persons could intimidate the proposed prosecution witness who served under them because they still have some influence in the institutions in which they served. Offences that attract capital punishment, bail is still allowed. But this one is just about financial crimes, maximum. It's just a term of imprisonment. So that is why we are saying that they be granted bail. And under the law, it is the prosecution that should produce the reasons or that has the duty or the burden to prove or show that they are not entitled to bail. All we need to do is to ask for it and, but whatever the prosecution has said today, whether that will amount to sufficient reason to deny them bail is what we are going to listen to on Monday when we come for the ruling. The basis is that there are ordinary men there who stole a goat. They are in prison. Here, the fact of this crime alleged against them is me, you, you and Mahai, we, we understand the, the effect. Life were lost. Soldiers were killed because there were no arms. So money that are meant for this purchase of these arms, what is the subject matter of this church? Then should they then be encouraged and say, go home without no condition? They were even suggesting that the court should release them on self-recognizance. So that's why we, I was passionate about that and I said, no, it cannot be done like that. A five-man panel at the Court of Appeal has upheld the judgment of the River State Governorship Election Tribunal, which nullified the election of Mr. Nyesom Wike as the governor of River State. In a judgment that lasted over two hours, the court held that Mr. Wike was not validly elected as governor and dismissed his appeal, challenging the verdict of the tribunal. 
The court therefore ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to conduct fresh elections into the office of the governor of the state. Governor Nyesom Wike, the candidate of the People's Democratic Party, who challenged the judgment of the Election Petition Tribunal, which nullified his election, predicated his appeal on seven grounds. He asked the appeal court to, among other issues, determine whether the tribunal's failure to turn down his preliminary objection did not amount to denying him an opportunity to fair hearing. He urged the court to overturn the verdict of the tribunal on the grounds that he was denied pre-hearing conference. He also asked the courts to set aside the verdict of the tribunal on the grounds that Mr. Peterside Dakuku of the All Progressive Congress lacked the local standi to challenge the outcome of the election, in addition to his claim that the tribunal lacked the jurisdiction to hear the petition. One after the other, the five-man appeal panel knocked out the grounds of appeal, saying Mr. Wike was never validly elected as governor of River State. The court therefore dismissed the appeal for lacking in merit and ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to conduct fresh governorship elections for River State. Although the chairman of the People's Democratic Party was not in court, the chairman of the All Progressive Congress in River State applauded the verdict of the appeal court. We said there was no election, and this judgment of the Court of Appeal that affirmed the judgment of the tribunal uh, is a vindication of our standpoint. We said there was no election. Now we have the opportunity to go back and vote for the candidate of our choice. Lawyer to the All Progressive Congress also applauded the verdict of the court. We are happy with the judgment. Uh, we are not surprised that the appeals were dismissed. Uh, all the issues that were raised and ag argued uh, were resolved in favor of the first and second respondent. Counsel to the People's Democratic Party and Mr. Wiki announced plans to contest the verdict of the court. We will obtain copies of this judgment in due course, study them and give our clients um, informed advice. But clearly, I can assure you, we would like to have a second opinion by the Supreme Court on the various legal issues raised and thrown up by the nature of this petition. With the Supreme Court as a terminal point for governorship election petitions, the last may not have been heard of the April 11, 2015 governorship election in River State. In part two, after the break, we continue our 2015 review. Tonight, our focus shifts to the National Assembly. That's in a moment. Please stay with us.